I think that we've got our um, our guest guest host coming up right now. We've got Steve Rhodes. Hi, Steve. How are you? Doing well, Basil. Yourself? I'm very good. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Uh, so, so I know you're just, a big tennis player. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, just before we get going, tell us the service that you provide here at TFNN, and uh, then we can get going. Sure. So I, I provide a, a daily uh, newsletter service. It's called uh, uh, Mastering Probability. And I send out a morning update, usually by 9 o'clock, uh, if not a little bit sooner. It covers all the markets. Uh, when I say all the markets, uh, all the futures markets, uh, all the currency mar all the, the um, when I say future, I know you mentioned that you're long commodities. So I cover yes. all the different commodities out there. Uh, and then I do a end of day report. So after the market closes, we take a look at what's going on inside the, the sectors inside the S&P 500, the index ETF, side WM, diamond, spies, and Qs, as well as the indices and and, uh, just anything that I note uh, to help uh, folks uh, in the overnight uh, session. So an example might be the spot volatility index, which I believe is, I'm not looking at it right now, Basil, but it was trading above a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. And uh, when we get days like that, for those folks that trade the equity futures, it's really a cool tool because – we put that together with different bottoming patterns that I uh, teach uh, subscribers like you teach subscribers, the Chapman Wave. And it, uh, it just uh, it provides an edge to allow folks to understand what the markets are doing, where they're headed to, because we identify support and resistance levels. And uh, so that's what I do uh, each day. And then like yourself, uh, you know, uh, do a uh, do a show. So. I thought that today, maybe just yes. carrying upon the theme of last week, we were talking a little bit about the. Uh, about the bigger picture out here and uh, the uh, net capital movement is is really for me is one of the keys to understand the future what i mean by that it's a matter of being able to try to identify is is money flowing out of asia into the u.s out of the third world economies into the u.s and out of europe into U the u.s or is it going the other way around so understanding net capital movement is really key to understanding the future and during periods of war or international uncertainty. So we certainly have that going on. A uh, capital uh, typically, or the US dollar, capital flows into the US dollar. And, you know, because we're the reserve currency uh, is one of the reasons out here. Uh, also because the US dollar has never been canceled. That's way different than the Euro and other currencies over in Europe. Thank goodness. Uh, different than uh, currencies in China. Uh, really any place around the globe. So the U.S. dollar index has never been canceled and is a, in, and is a reason that uh, capital will flow to that. Now, you know, a lot of people will talk about inflation and all the money that's out there and under the assumption that the U.S. dollar is somehow cratered. The U.S. dollar index bottomed in May of 2011. And right now, it's generating a signal, at least in my work, that price uh, might target the 109.58 level. And we're trading around 99.92 right now. So, so that, would, that would be above the high that was made in 2020 of 102.99 on the index. Yes, yeah. That, so I've got an A to B. Yeah, yep. I have an A to B equal CD pattern, price above the top of its daily profile, and certainly the, the swing point that you're referring to is a level that's got to be taken out. But the, the notion that somehow the U.S. dollar index is cratering is, is just an just a, just a incorrect assumption. And we know that when an instrument – oh, another thing that I want to share with folks is that when instruments trade above the prior year's high – or uh, then the instrument is termed to be in a bullish mode. And the opposite is true. If you start trading below the prior year's low, instrument is definitely bearish out there. So here's a picture of the U.S. dollar index for a daily time frame, Basel. As long as price remains above 96.94, from a yearly standpoint, the U.S. dollar index will be bullish. Now, as you know, there's a, a, a currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index. Three of those currency pairs, the euro, the pound, and the yen, make up 83%. The other currencies are the Canadian dollar, the Swiss corona, and the uh, Swedish uh, uh, Swiss franc and the Swedish corona out there. But if we just focus in on these three that make up, the, meaning the euro, the pound, and the U.S. and the uh, Japanese yen out there, um, what we'll see when we take a look at their monthly charts is that there may be a change in trend unfolding by this coming May, so next month. And the U.S. dollar index generated TD9 count bottom patterns in 2021 for the euro. That's a uh, uh, the euro uh, uh, bottoming pattern. Well, where did I? 
Oh my goodness, that, that chart that's is. That's the Eurodollar <laughs> currency <laughs> pair? Top, top, right there, there we go. So with the right, upper right hand chart, you'll see bar number nine. It's another right, pattern that I, uh, that I uh, teach out there. And if you take a look at the pound in the lower left, it was a TD9 count top that identified uh, that. Uh, top and we can take a look at the US dollar index on a monthly basis. It was a TD9 count bottom. Now, if we take a look at what's going on right now, right now, the US dollar index, if you look at the very right hand side, it is in bar number nine. Remember there was a bottom, a TD9 count can can either top or bottom bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. If we look at the euro, it also is in bar number nine out here. Looks like it's gonna go target the 107 level. And if we take a look at the Great British Pound, it's also in bar number nine, and the Japanese yen is in bar number nine. So this is suggesting to us that we may see a change in trend in these currency pairs. It may be at the by the end of April, it may be uh, by uh, May using the TD9 system. One of the reasons that I like to track currency pairs, especially the euro is because of the impact that it has on capital flows into the U.S. stock markets out here. And we've taken a look at this chart in the uh, past out here, and a real key level for the euro is going to be this 105 area. These blue arrows, uh, and I'm just focusing on the euro here, Basil, these blue arrows show the valid monthly TD9s for the euro since 2005. So if you start in the lower left, you'll see a TD9 count bottom. That uh, right. took price up until it formed a TD9 count top. If we take a look at back here in uh, uh, July of 2015, we see a nice TD9 count bottom. Then we've got the TD9 count top that we took a look at in 2021. And now we've got another pattern, another TD9 count pattern that is forming, as I said, will complete by May. So it's something that we really wanna pay attention to. The July 2007 TD9 top, people might have thought I overlooked that, and I did, didn't overlook that. It, this is a pattern that actually failed. Now, when I say it failed, when you get a TD9 count, what, what price will typically do is move down and test this line that I call the oscillator and change line, another tool that I share with people. And if price holds a green oscillator and change line as it did here, that's a very bullish signal. We see that price basically doubled in the uh, euro off of that TD9 count top that had failed in uh, July of 2007. So we want to pay attention to both sides of the uh, trade out there. And if the euro, in this case here, continues to to uh, to fall, then we should see a strong rally in the S&P 500. And again, that key level that I'm watching here, and this is, we're looking at a line chart, so just closing prices. So on a closing basis, if we see a move below 105 inside the euro, what we're likely to see is a huge move up inside of the S&P 500. When I say a strong move, I'm referring to figures like 50-22, 5512 or 6001 those represent horizontal trading ranges you may remember that takes us back to the days of bud rolfs right. out there Correct. so that's the yes. that's that's my view I, on a shorter term basis what i'll share with people is that the s&p 500 the cash indice is in bar number eight today the es mini is only in bar number seven this is you mean on the way down yeah the way down yes and this means that we could see a bottom between today and wednesday for the s p 500 so baz always great to be with you, you do such a great job and uh, thanks for taking the time thank you very much steve love to hear your work and i love the way that you always dig deeper into everybody's techniques that it becomes your own thank you very much you bet take care have a wonderful day thank you